since the dawn of mankind, humans have sought one thing above all else, the ability to control time. You see it in movies and science fiction novels, people talking about time travel. What if we could go forward into the future, to the past with the intent to change something, to erase a mistake? What if we could stop time entirely? You'd never know if there was someone among you with this power. You might not feel the stoppage of time at all, aside from a small shift in your heartbeat, like a bike chain jumping gears. But the truth remains. There may be someone out there, stopping you from moving, from talking, if only for an instant. Maybe she's making a clever aside, playing a practical joke, or maybe she's out for something more. As with any power, there's no guaranteeing this person will always maintain control over it. Perhaps one day, time will remain frozen for her. Every moment, every breath, stopped forever. A haunting thought, isn't it? Yet it's the type of thing that can only happen in the Unexpected Storytelling Podcast. the week of the big pep rally here at school. And you know what that means. Boys, sports, and boys playing sports. All right, Dana, you heard the bell. It's time to get moving. Yes, sir, Principal Torberg. Wow, where was the dweeb alert when I needed one? Hey, Dana, you rang? <laughs> Please. Did you finish my math homework? It's due in five minutes. Oh, about that. I think my frog ate your homework. Your frog? Don't you mean dog? No, I meant frog. <laughs> <laughs> His name's Henry. He's a bullfrog. Henry, this is Dana, my best friend. Why are you such a screw-up? <laughs> I think he said if you give him a kiss, he'll turn into a cute prince. Sleaze? Would you? Hey, 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 what is going on here? All right, Dana, what did I tell you? That it's a toupee on your head and not a dead skunk? <laughs> no, not that. I said it was time to get to class, and now you're late. You and me have a date. In my office. Now. Well, Dana, you were right. You did get a date for the pep rally. <laughs> You're not off the hook either, Sleaze. Let's go, both of you. Skip to it. My Principal Torberg, my doctor told me I shouldn't skip with my bad arches. <laughs> Now, this is the third time I've had to tell you both to get to class before the bell rings. What do I need to do to get you both on a proper schedule? Meow? Meow? What do you mean, meow? Well, whenever my cat Martha wants her food, she just meows at me. <laughs> Sleaze, I am not going to meow at you. Well, how about a wolf? <laughs> Principal Torberg, don't you think it's a little ironic that you're holding us here to talk about our absences when we could be in class right now? That's enough lip out of you, Dana. If either of you are late for class again, you'll be suspended. Now what? Principal Torberg, do you have a couple seconds to talk about the pep rally? I'm a little busy right now, Chad. Can it wait? Whoa. 
Hunkasaurus alert! Excuse me? I mean, uh, come on, Principal Torberg. Let him in. Not like we have anywhere to go. <laughs> Very funny, Dana. All right, Chad, you've got one minute. Well, me and the rest of the male cheerleaders were thinking to raise money for the football team's new uniforms. We'd do a car wash the morning of the pep rally. Time out! A car wash with the male cheerleaders the morning of the pep rally? There's no way I'm missing out on that. Except, if I don't attend class that morning, I'll be suspended. Hmm, I think I have a plan. Time in! Now, Principal Torberg, don't you think it's unfair to keep me and Sleaze from helping out the cheerleaders with such a good cause just to make us go to class? Nice try, Dana. But I don't think so. But Principal Torberg, you can't just... Oh, yes, I can. Now get to math. Hey, Dana, did you really mean it when you said you wanted to help us with the car wash? Yeah. Too bad Principal Torberg is such a scuzz bucket and won't let me. Well, I can maybe think of one way you can get out. Really? What? I'll do anything to get to that car wash. Why don't you drive your car to the parking lot? We'll be washing the mat before school. Then you can say you had no choice and got stuck when we started washing it. Time out! <laughs> hmm. That idea might just work. Then not only will I get to see the male cheerleader shirtless with a bunch of soapy rags, but I'll get a clean car out of the deal, too! Time in! Chad, you're brilliant! You can count on me to... Chad? Chad? Hello? Chad, can you hear me? Chad? Oh. Oh no! I froze in time! For good! It's been three years. Plenty of time to live with the consequences of my actions. Food's running low. I can't grow anymore, since food doesn't grow when time's frozen. I'm going to have to move on to a place I've never known before. The only things that still seem to be unfrozen by time are the waves. The waves used to tell me that anything was possible. I could tell time by the waves. You could say they were heaven's clock. There goes a seagull. I guess it's not frozen by time either. Or was that sound just in my head? There goes a walrus. Am I just filling the empty void with sounds of my youth? A void put there by... My father. My daughter. You are just like I am, so worried by time's passage, always wanting to stop it, manipulate it. Now you're nothing more than a pilgrim wandering this earth, looking for a spot to land, like a seagull. You get older, and time gets shorter. Three years as a child feels like three days as a father, a mother. Three minutes as a grandmother. I suppose that's what damnation is. In a way, we're all damned the day we were born. The day time began for us. But what if we could go back in time? Back before we were born. Back when the universe was a soup. Mm. I could go for some soup right now. Really getting hungry out here. Time is nice, but you can't live in time. You can only die, day after day.
far as I can tell, it's been 20 years since I froze time to make a hilarious aside. I've since moved out here to a lighthouse, living alone with just the sounds of the waves to keep me company. My daughter. Someday, you'll find that hell is just when the pieces of your life never come together. Now I just listen to the waves and think of my dad. I'm caught in this hell of my own making, thinking back to everything I did in my life and everything I didn't do. Also, I eat a lot of fish. In fact, let me go down to the beach now and check one of my nets. No surprises here. The waves pushed these still living but frozen in time fish into my net. Wait, what's this? A bottle with a message inside? To whoever may read this, I'm a schoolgirl who used to make hilarious asides while freezing time, but now I think I froze it permanently. I don't know what to do. I don't know if anyone else is out there. If you're reading this, then I guess I'm not alone. Come find me here in Port Menier on Anacosti Island. Julie. This changes everything. Do I dare venture out alone? Into the sea? Leave the safety of my lighthouse to find Julie? She could be the only other person still living in the world. Otherwise, there could be a million Julies out there, and I've been too scared to go look for them. I've always been scared of change, of living in the real world. It's why I always stop time. I wasn't just making humorous observations. I was also scared of living in the moment, of losing control of it. What to do? All right, Dana, here's your drain plug. Pulling this out is the first step in changing your oil. But Dad, I can barely remember to change my underpants every day. Why do I gotta know how to change oil? <laughs> Dana, damn it. This isn't a joke. Someday you're going to have to be an adult and you need to learn how to take responsibility. To change oil. To clear leaves out of the gutter. To... Be a mother to take part of this world and not just be someone who goofs off and makes hilarious asides in class. Trust the moon and the stars. Follow your conscience and don't play with time. It's a powerful force in the universe. It has the power to change things. It also has the power to doom you, especially if you freeze it when you want to make some comment and you don't want others to hear what your zany scheme is. That memory you heard actually happened in my head four years ago. Ever since then, one name has been stuck in my mind. Julie. I've walked toward her, toward salvation, to... to poor Meunier. I just didn't realize how far it was, and now my feet hurt. It also took a while to build a boat made out of cardboard boxes and banana peels. And then I realized I could use an actual boat, since everyone's frozen. Here I am, mumps at sea, about to land, to perhaps see the only other human on Earth. Wait, there she is, on the shore. There you are, on the shore. Yes, Julie, I'm here. Do you hear the seagulls?
It's been 60 years since we met. We're now both 80 years old. But the world, the world is... The world hasn't aged a day since we were 17. All those years, living the lives of people we didn't know. But you gave me hope. And you, you gave me fish. We are both seagulls, and our world is the dawning light they chase. Yet soon we will be no more. I buried you at sea this morning. My love for you is now the rain. In my seventy years of frozen time, it seems I've learned only one thing. That once we take the time out, we can never put it back. All right, Dana, so you're going to drive to the... Wait, you're not Dana. Help! Somebody get this old lady away from me! Hey, 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 hey! What is going on here? Listen, I don't know how an elderly woman who's dressed like a teenager got in here, but I need you to get out of my office. Now! Is that a toupee on your head, sir? Or a dead skunk? <laughs> d d d dana Time in. Well then, we hope you've learned a thing or two about the dangers presented in the power to stop time. Maybe you'll give the idea pause, should you ever be granted this ability. To be sure, the temptation to stop time and play a harmless joke on someone may be strong. But would it be worth it? Something to think about. <laughs> That's our show for this month. We invite you back next time for a tale about a man with a secret. A secret so big, so unbelievable, that no one on the planet would believe him if he told him. And that secret he's been carrying around for his whole life? Well, if you have to know, you'll need to tune in for Secret Leprechaun. For the Unexpected Storytelling Podcast, I'm the old man, reminding you to keep finding ways to make your life a little more unexpected. Goodbye. Goodbye.